Good morning, folks. We've got the goodbye kiss from the Large Sunspot group. You guys seem to love last night's special video, so thank you for that. We've got a big top story to hit this morning, so let's start with our star and what was slowed down in the opening sequence should be easily visible here. Large eruption off the departing sunspots with rippling visible on half the Earth facing corona. The solar flare aspect of the eruption was a near M-class flare, but was not impulsive and the longer duration created considerable plasma movement and bulk to the CME. Now folks, we'll play this a number of times here, the coronagraph shot of the CME. Most of the ejecta is missing Earth ahead of orbit, instead erupting at Jupiter and Saturn, and the Parker Solar Probe as well actually, direct hit on the little satellite. What's notable is the signature on the left side of the screen matching the eruption time. Folks, we've seen CMEs expand to hit half the solar system, and there may indeed be ejecta from the CME that glances our planet around Monday night or Tuesday morning UTC time. We'll see tomorrow where the experts weigh in, but for now, consider a non-direct impact possible early next week. Minor geomagnetic storm potential, if any. Well, folks, I told you yesterday morning that our May 5th raising of climate science was countered by 10 professors and government scientists, all considered climate experts. They were not exactly pro-level in their debunking attempt, and last night I asked that they pay for it. Well, actually, I offered to pay them or a climate charity of their choice if any of them would come discuss their con artistry, but you get the idea. If you didn't see it, oh, watch it today. Quick look at the Blot Echo wind map here from QuakeWatch.net. Using all three factors will be key this next week, as another uptick in seismicity is indicated by the solar activity. Let's move on to a moment from the dark energy survey. Still not finding dark energy, dark matter, or anything that actually matches up with the models of the cosmos, and today is no different. I'd also like to take a moment and wonder if the noir lab is meant to mean black like in French, or the fictional pessimistic film genre. Either way, best name ever for a component of the Dark Energy Survey. And they are finding the universe to not quite be so spread out as they had imagined. Imagine that. Another surprise. But I have to admit their newest image is actually quite spectacular. FYI, the little streaks on here, the little lines of color, are almost certainly asteroids passing through the viewing field. Otherwise, a few foreground stars of our galaxy are all that stands in front of a titanic number of galaxies deeper into space. From the visible normal matter aspect of the Dark Energy Survey, they do perform an incredible service. Folks, you remember that Orion image from May 20th's morning show, the one with many odd features like the dark line in an arc which looked like an error until we traced it through and behind the molecular clouds and dust? Well, the suspect sky group includes Xavier, one of our animators who is something of an image expert in real life as well. In their latest show, Xavier breaks down the image in high detail and reveals far more than we did here on the morning show. Their podcast is free on Rumble and linked below. Now on to our top story. Folks, when two years ago, which is actually only one Martian year, they noticed clouds appearing too early for the region of the rover. I told myself we couldn't call it a potential signal of its shift until it happened again. Well, one Mars year later, it did happen again. The clouds are appearing too early, and beyond that, they are also appearing at too high of altitude. This must now be added to the Martian warming and seismic anomalies seen at the Red Planet in its sector of the longer list of ongoing planetary changes in our solar system indicating that the larger system shift in the 12,000-year cycle we cover is continuing to progress and offer new signs, ones that can be confirmed as persistent. I put this one on par with the Pluto atmosphere collapse, the Neptune storm reversal, and Jupiter's magnetic field changes that forced its trapped electrons to send out different signals. We greatly appreciate your support. If you didn't see last night's video, it's highly recommended, and if you have kept up with our disaster series or our book, we add another one on the list for Mars today. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.